what I wanted to ask you was with regard to tools, and I don't know if you're going to teach this in your workshop. Um, if not, you might want to touch upon it, teach it or go more in depth with this. Like some tools just don't work for me. I mean, it's, oh. it's not that they don't work for me. I don't vibe with them. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. And, and I, like, for example, the Ouija board. Now it's just a piece of wood or it's just a piece of cardboard. It's nothing. It's inanimate. It's the intention that you bring to it. Nonetheless, there is so much stigma on the Ouija board from so many decades and decades of people associating with the exorcist or with demonic possession and such that I now have just kind of a resistance to it. And so as a tool, it's just not something that I would go to. Um, and with crystals as well, when I use crystals, I really, I prefer to touch them and feel them and see how I, how I align or how I click in with them. So how would you suggest somebody actually pick a divination tool that's the right tool for them? Because, you know, you might teach on pendulums, you might teach on oracle cards, but how are they going to know that it's the tool that they should be using? Do they feel that? Like, what Yeah, happened? you can start with the very immediate response to it. That's really, you know, if it's something as broad a category as cards, yeah, maybe someone's like, I absolutely do not want to use cards, oracle or tarot of any kind. That's possible, but more than likely, they may want to just peruse because, again, cards are basically books. And, right. you know, that, that's such a broad category. It's kind of hard to throw out books as being useful to people at all. So you might want to just open yourself up a little bit and rest your attention on some, maybe you haven't been exposed to ones that actually would light you up. But the other ones like, yeah, like a pendulum or the, the, the talking board or the Ouija board, that has so much to do, I mean, if you know about it, you probably know the dark associated with it, and it's just harder to bypass. And why should you have to do that work when you have all of the right. other options? Right. And, and then there are other ones who just maybe they don't even interest you, like maybe runes just don't even interest you. And honestly, they don't really interest me that much. No, but if no. I say no. runes and it interests you, then you may actually take, I mean, I'm going to be talking about it in a general way. I'm not going to go over the hundreds and hundreds of right. runes. But I will give, yeah, I'll give a list so that you could very easily just allow your inner being to be lit up even by just the word. If this is the first time you've ever heard the word runes and you're like, that sounds cool. I like the sound of that word. Go research it because you may actually really like it. So the, the right. tool, overarching concept of how to use a tool or like I say, a technique, because besides using things that are actual implements, we're going to just talk about practices. I think techniques are probably more powerful. Yeah, but. absolutely. I think so. They can be too, because then it really does take away the bypass of the communication with the self in, in a lot of, so I think it's good to, we can use those partners and it actually can be really fun to use mm -hmm. cards with beautiful artwork and stuff. And it can be fun to use a pendulum, but um, if we feel like we have to have those tools, then again, that's when we've become dependent and it's become right. a bit of the master. I, I recommend to people when I, they're learning how to meditate, I'm like, yeah, sure, use guided meditations. But really, you want to be able to meditate without a guidance too. You don't want to be dependent on always needing someone or something, even if it's music, to have to right. get you into the state. You're totally empowered then. So yeah, I would say definitely start, if you have an association like with the Ouija board, well, it's just one thing and it's so minor. And it is different than like the broad category of cards. Right. Just go with what you start with, what you are attracted to, what excites you, and well, how, well, you can always adapt it. How can you tell what excites you? So even if it's just a row of pendulums and mm -hmm. you're considering a pendulum, like how would you know which one is your match, or how would you be able to identify excitement, which would be your body saying yes, 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 that's the one. It really, it would be visual and and um, sensual. So uh, holding it. Usually your eye is attracted to it first because mm -hmm. that's just how we're oriented as a biological being. And then you'll feel, your, you'll feel kind of your heart and your solar plexus, this entire area being right. attracted to it. Or if you pick it up and if it is a crystal or if it's a pendulum and you hold it, when I hold it, I can get all kinds of different responses. And sometimes I have to sit there for a second and I'll say, okay, so I feel stimulated. Is that a positive stimulation or is that almost like an anxiety? Right. So it could be like heightened, too heightened for my energy. Like for my field, it's almost, maybe almost too great a match. What's really cool about that process, I think, is because obviously if we're talking about a pendulum or a crystal or something like that, it's completely innocent. So it hasn't done anything wrong like a, we think people have or something. It helps us to kind of get out of that. It's really just about things being able to uh, be the right kind of resonance for one another. If this, the field, the, the 
the components of this that creates its field and my field mesh if they like each other and right. otherwise really just think of it as resonance which means um, harmony you know what I mean like a feeling that it's coming together or dissonance which means kind of repelling so if you feel it you can kind of just leave it as a body compass of yes or no like I say sometimes I have to feel it for a second more and I'll say is that a good excitement or is that a put that down because it's too much for you <laughs> you know well, and what I like about that and, and noticing the energy of it is that it actually honors the energy of the tool because sometimes people just regard tools as things that belong to them and that they use and it's all about them but Crystals have their own personality. Crystals will communicate with you if you sit there in a rock shop and you actually hold your crystal. I mean, and you, you do feel your way into it. They, they will start talking to you in their own way. And the same with seashells, the same with pendulums. They're all just energy. They're a form of energy. And when we pick those tools based on how that energy feels to us and how we feel, to the tool, like is the tool effective? Like I will actually play around with the pendulum to see if it works for me or if it mm -hmm. doesn't work for me. Because maybe the pendulum doesn't want to work with Crystal Ann Compton, but it is a collaboration, it's a partnership. It's never just about you and impressing your will, I guess, on the tool itself. It's about finding the right match.